I'm the second person here from um, Innocentive. You also, um, I think, met yesterday um, Alf Bingham, who was on one of the panels. Um, Alf is actually the founder of the company and a terrific friend of mine. So we're both uh, absolutely pleased to be here. We've got an interesting, um, interesting topic because we're talking about um, how to bring sort of a more open and innovative culture into the organization. And when you begin to look at institutionalizing these things, rules change entirely because you're now talking about culture. And so I'm going to do a couple of things fairly quickly to kind of get us into that mindset. Um, but first, I wanted to just make a comment on the, um, um, I mean, the, just the great words, and, and I thought it was inspiring around the culture and all the discussions with regards to the um, uh, Progressive Automotive Prize. I think that's fantastic. It's interesting. Here's something you may or may not know. Uh, three years ago, do you know what the number one uh, uh, highest R&D spend company on the planet was? Does anybody know? It's Ford Motor Company. It dropped to six a year later. I think it's about 67th right now. So the amount of money that corporations and organizations spend on R&D and product development doesn't necessarily relate to innovation. I think the most powerful notion there is what the culture looks like. So um, that's a lot of what we're going to talk about today. So to kind of get us started, uh, to get us started, um, I wanted to do, uh, to, uh, to do kind of a fun slide. So how many people here know, the, um, know who wants to be a millionaire? Yeah? And you might, you might have seen it. If you haven't seen it there, you might have seen it in Slumdog Millionaire, a really fun movie. Um, how many people know how the game is played? Basically, you've got questions. They get harder and harder. The contestant works their way up the list. And they've got three lifelines. What are the lifelines? Does anybody know? Phone a friend. Ask the audience. 50-50, right? Split the, split the number of options in half. So I'm assuming everybody in the room knows the game. Does anybody know who's watched the show typically what the first lifeline is that's used? Ask the audience. To ask the audience, almost always. Right, ask the audience. And does anybody have a sense as to what the most accurate lifeline is? Ask the audience. 71%. Ask the audience. So we're talking about a culture topic here, but let's start with the individual. You can coach the contestants of who wants to be a millionaire on that the most accurate lifeline is asking the audience, asking all the people in the room to really converge their thinking and to essentially give you the answer. You can coach them on that, but still they'll use that on the least valuable question and they'll phone their friend on the most valuable question. And unless their friend happens to be on the other end of the phone line, you know, on, on the internet, uh, he's probably not gonna get the right answer. So the point is this, human nature tells us right, tells us every day that we're going to go with the comfortable. We're going to go with the things we know in times of stress or when the stakes are high, even if the data is in complete opposition to that. So we're really dealing with businesses and organizations in the same way. Businesses trust what they know, the way they've been doing things. They're very fearful of going to the outside. And that's a lot of what we're talking about. Um, so innovation in 2009 and beyond. Now more than ever, and this has almost become a cliche, but it's about better, faster, and more cost-effective than ever. And I think right now what we see is an enormous opportunity for businesses to get the culture right and to engage in open innovation to really fundamentally and radically change their efficiency and effectiveness in this space. And I think this is true for businesses, foundations, and governments alike. And why do they want to do this? They want to do it because it really does mean faster time to market and quicker turnaround times on new products and accelerated innovation. It means dynamic, flexible ability to bring on staff when needed, uh, but maybe to use staff in a variable way. For corporations, for organizations, this is critically important. And it's part of the new economy, right? We are now in an entirely new economic reality, and companies can use these tools to be extremely powerful, but it comes back to the culture. And right now, I think it's fair to say, a crisis is a terrible thing to waste. So when you're looking at cultural change for the change management gurus in the room, what do you know? Culture actually only changes when what? When it has to change. So you've got a unique opportunity right now to think about um, this economy, the space we're in, what's happening in various industries, and hopefully the resilience of these companies to come out fighting and strong. But to use this opportunity now to fundamentally think differently about innovation, because that's what will allow them to thrive. So you've got, um, you've got you see up here on the screen, and in honor of Wikipedia and other uh, crowdsourced uh, organizations, I went ahead and pulled this. But you'll see there's a number of key differences between closed and opened innovation organizations. You'll see closed innovations typically have the mindset that the smart people in this field work for us. Right? That's, those are closed innovation principles. Open innovation principles, not all the smart people work for us. We need to work with smart people inside and outside of the company. I'll draw your attention to two more. 
we discover it ourselves, we'll get it to market first. Right? The more open innovation principle is we don't have to originate research to profit from it. Find the most innovative ideas in the world inside or outside. Engineer a culture that allows you to take that into the organization and get it to market in smart ways. That's the winning organization. And the last one I'll bring to your attention is we have to create the most and the best ideas in the industry. We will win through that strategy. And I think the open version of that is we'll make the best use of internal and external ideas and then we will win. So it's a very different kind of cultural take on the topic. We interviewed um, a number of, uh, of our customers over the last year, and one of the funniest and most insightful things that I think was said is, you know, Duane, you're doing an enormous number of interesting things here. You've got these great strategies for implementing open innovation, but the reality is culture eats strategy for lunch, right? The implication being, you can plan whatever you want to. If you don't get through the cultural issues, you never actually get there from here.